democracy operations of uh, 1871, which is called Act of Congress 1871. See? So if you read the divine warning for the prophet and then start doing research, it will lead you to these other things, and you will see the politics, and you will not be blinded by what they do, but you will also be prepared because you already know what their motives are. You will already know what they're operating. And this is basically the, the, the fundamental would give you an outline of protocol, of response to them, or rebuttal to them, or any estoppel in relationship to any claim that they may make. Not learning while they're beating you up, but that should have been of your culture in the first place, and you should have been well prepared. And this is why I know the you said the more science stuff of America, so that you would have been prepared. But it's also why it was infiltrated to, to what? To undermine the operations. Which is again why most of us are in venues like this, like Dr. Nile, uh, supply a, a venue where this information can be given freely because it's suppressed in other venues. Why? Because many people are guilty of denying that no Dwale talk civics. They're guilty of suppressing the knowledge necessary to make our people better citizens of their own nation state. And that's all civics. And as you can see, the very heart of the divine and we're teaching you or talking to you about writing writs that certain states statements are made because what you're doing you're closing doors of a feudal operation because what you're dealing with and this is exactly what you're this is not conjecture this is exactly what you're dealing with it's not liking your skin it's not feeling better it's feudal law that's what you're operating under right now and the feudalists are still in all your states. That's why the U.S. democracy was set up. This Muslim law or United States Republic Constitution, U.S. democracy, they're two different platforms, but they're both operating here. You've been overthrown. Get it through your head. Get off, get off your ego. Humble yourself and respect, and respect what happened to you and do something about it. You can choose not to. But remember, it's suggested to you. You can do with this whatever you please, but you're not going to say that you weren't told. Because things are accelerating. Who will to say so loaded be? And the more you want to help yourself teach someone who doesn't know this, that's where your power is. You're not going to have this cup of coffee by yourself. Because the birthright belongs to every man, every woman, every child. And if you don't confess your own, don't expect that womb is not going to do what? Convert, because that's what he's doing. He's converting anything that's not claimed, translation, whether it's abstract or physical. If it ain't nailed down, they're stealing it. And what, how do they steal that which they can't carry. It's called hypothecation. Write that down. Get used to it. Write that down. Hypothecation. H Y. Because these are the things that are actually going on. See, so whenever you're dealing with any of them, all of these things must be in the canvas of your mind. Automatic. No different than you playing basketball. You know, dribbling must become automatic. Let me see. Should I do like? No. It's got. It's got to be natural. It's Got to flow with it. Accounts that are associated uh, with the. Um, now explain to people what the TDA accounts are. So TDA accounts. Um, well, you, no, when you move your acronym and explain what it is, right? I believe it stands for trust depository account. Of course, yeah. Now say that. <laughs> yeah, so these accounts, when you're born, we were born into slavery, and our birth certificate is what allows. It's not your birth certificate. Now, it's a back up. Back up. Now, and this is what you want to do, because you're, you're, you're correct, but you want to not project into the ether's possessor, because it's not your person. Those are banknotes made by them and placed against your trust. Mm -hmm. They're not yours, okay. and you will never capture them. Just keep that in mind, because those who are waking up to this 
other charlatans are, are, are trying to sell them processes of capturing that which they cannot capture. It's a promise though. So any, whenever, whenever you say possessive, you take the burden of the debt. Because the whole thing is about conversion. And you got to remember when um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt um, used the birth certificate as bank bonds, that's because the United States Corporation was broke again. And this is the um, corporation papers I showed you all that I shared with you all. Every once in a while, I give you those corporate papers of the United States, 1925. All right, so 1925, no Grawley said, no old King like Temple, as the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, and he registered as a civic organization. Counter move. And bankrupted them again. You get the point? Although they'll, in history, they'll tell you other things about the bankers and other things, but when it really boils down, it ain't money, it's not the gold and the silver, it's the airship. It's the trust. It's them trust accounts. What are those trust accounts? They're tied, they're Cedar's trusts. They're tied to the global estate trust set up by the Popes of Rome when they defeated the Moors, i.e. when they overcame the Red House. Alhambra, 1492, that's why it's used as an axis here, although it was centuries later when the complete fall, meaning that, that, that's an axis here, but that's why that's there. Don't never say my license under the feudal law operations because you've accepted the, you accepted the debt. Don't say my birth certificate. It ain't yours. Did, did your mother produce that? Did your mother send that to the DDC in New York on Water Street? No. Did your mother declare a bank bond that she sold her babies to Rome? No. no. Did she declare for the public record and on bonds that she sold the eggs to her own? Of uh, her, uh, her fallopian tube left and right, born and unborn, to the Pope of Rome to support the United States Corporation debt that Lincoln bankrupted in 1860? Yes, well, how are you going to say my, my, my birth certificate? Do you understand the spirit that's on that? Yes. Semantics. They will use it to understand when you say it, you're on the right path, but at that point you've accepted the debt and killed your own argument. Mm -hmm. You need to know that, and, and anyone that, that speaks on that, Stop saying my. Now back up and choose better words. So the, birth the birth certificate of the United States Corporation Franchise State. What particular state operators? Jersey, well, you know, Delaware. What 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 so state territory that, that's controlling your state? Delaware. All right. So, so you would say you would say. The Attorney General holder of alien properties, supported by the CEO, and that would be whoever their governor is. The Cedars <laughs> Trust certificate placed against my estate designated a birth certificate. Then the wordy, but guess what? As soon as you say mine, you killed all the rest of the salvation you got. Because it's not yours. All right? Another, another point. What songs do you like? What's like Michael song? Jackson? I like Michael Jackson. Do you sing any songs? I can't sing all the songs. <laughs> all the law. Can you kick and all that stuff? I might do a spin every once in a while. Yeah, you move on. No, no, no. Did you ever think about copywriting one of your songs since you decided you like it? No. Why? It's not my song. Well, is that your first thing? Well, we're going to have you try to claim this copyright infringement. You see the game that you're playing with people? I, I just I, I want to get you to think. Now back up and continue your conversation. I'm not going to break you down. Just continue. So, I just want you to think, because you got to think contract law, beneficiary versus trustee. Right. Because at any point that you are bridge, your argument is dead, even though we know where you're going with it. So, actually, let me, let me back up and ask Yeah, you, uh, you're thinking now. I smell smoke. That's what I like. <laughs> I'm going to question. So, my understanding, my understanding of it, or overstanding of it, was that the individual who assumed the straw man was the principal beneficiary of the account 
that was um, indexed to the Social Security. All right, now let's back up. What persons have you talked to, or that any one of us can say, if you know, anyone, feel free to interject, your family members that assumed that birth certificate and has been going into that Cedars Trust, and therefore all of their account notices, which have been called bills, were discharged by them or set off to the United States Service Corporation. Whoa, Tell me uh, who's done it. Everybody. No, they have not. No, mind. <laughs> Is it the common practice? All right. Who's the last time there, there was a notice sent to your house called electric bill? Or some kind of tax bill, any type, water bill, yes, whatever sir. they say. That was a statement of account. That wasn't a bill. It was a coupon. Did somebody tell you to take that Cusick number off that Social Security instrument that they issued to you that it was to be discharged against the United States Corporation because it's their debt, not yours? Therefore, that statement is false. I know where you're going with it. But that's an assumption because they've been putting that out there because somebody gave me a some kind of package or some process. What I'm trying to present to you is you're on the path of the knowledge of what they've been doing, but your language creates liability. Come on, you've got to recognize it. All right? Because you're talking about, you're talking about contract law, and you're talking about hereditaments. You're talking trustee, beneficiary. Then you're talking conversion. Therefore, you're talking layering. That means for every instrument that's out there, you may have multiple people who are claiming right of that estate. That's why they've been bankers have been getting wealthy. That's why these politicians have been getting wealthy. That's all these big time preachers got all these big time churches getting wealthy. Going in and out of that sister Q, Cedar's trust, with a name that sounds like yours, his, hers, his, mine. This is what the bureaucratized slavery is. Now you tell this audience, who you know have been told from day one, your mom included, that she ain't been getting no bills, they were all statements of account. No. no. Oh, well, then don't make that statement then. I know people are saying that. It's operation. But understand, at what point they had ever told you that, the crap would have collapsed then, a long time ago. And Europeans would have been packing their bags going back to England, Ireland, Germany, and France. Because they're not home. You are. Are we clear? Yes. Now, let's go so back up. We think, I'm not just swaying where you're going with it, because you're on point. All right. But I'm trying to present to you, this is so others can learn. Yes. You, being a true heir who has been buried, yes. are learning some truth from some Europeans, middle class, whose estates are being dissolved. They want the Republic back, and they're making a claim of the American right of law, but they're not Americans. Come on. And you're using their language. It's not that you can't study it. Because they're being forced to tell the truth. But you got to know how to separate the wheat from the chafe. Come on. Are we clear? Because as soon as you step on the wrong side, you just let wrong, you just took the, the noose back off his head. Because every man and every woman, and even the children, must confess their own. Even children are excused. Because it's spirit. And it has no age. The sooner you figure that out, the sooner you go back into your throat and correct them words. We speak. Go ahead. Talk to us. Talk to us. The Treasury Deposit Account. 
Belonging to what persons or entities? Belonging to the United States Corporation, uh, which the governor of the state of Delaware is oh. serving as an agent. Now you're talking. People are talking. That account, which is indexed to the SQT Trust, that my mother signed me up for. She and did it, not. I know it. I know it. Well, I know well it. you didn't say that. That's why I told you go back. See, because understand this, and this is where we're going. We're here in the house of reawakening minds. Yes. We're bathing. Dr. Nyla brought us all here for baptism. Well, you're being reborn with a new mind. Mm -hmm. You better be careful what you say. First, there was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You better watch your words. Because they're not playing. Because every time you slip up, they'll punch you in your eye. Right. That's what they're there for. The U.S. Democracy Feudal Order Operations was put in place to steal your birthright. It's not accidental mistake. It's not accidental oversight. It's not accidental just the clerk or the judge is corrupt. The whole platform is corrupt from the poor by design. Now, you can't serve two masters. I ask you which side you on. But which side are you trying to get on? Lodeal. Because if you try to be a lodeal, and you start talking those feudal instruments as my, and my mother sold me, well, the argument's over. Your mom sold you, then what are you talking about? You're admitting the Christian black code, so then you come under them. In other words, involuntary servitude is unlawful. But there's a lot of volunteers. They agree to be black, don't go their property. They, but they don't like the black codes. Then they want to march all around the place, talk about the, they're unfair, they don't like my color. They agree to be black. That's what the Christian black codes are for, for black people. It's not who they are, that's who they agree to be. <laughs> Didn't the divine warning the prophet tell you stop practicing their words, names, and principles that delude the slavery, and you want to march all over the place and complain, and tell you what's going to happen. Now we're dealing with it. The deal of it is, it's not, the dude you ain't hitting the fan. All right. If you notice the brown, the blades are brown already, yeah, it ain't poking up. <laughs> and it's still coming through. Yeah. That's the real deal. And this is what's getting people awake. And much of what you're hearing is coming from middle class Europeans, different sovereignty groups who are trying to get back to re the Republic, but they understand in truth that when they breached that constitution and treaty in force, that their position was juristic. Yours is bloodline, birthright. They're two different venues. I want you all to write this down, I want you to look this up. In your law book. Nationalization, we say nationalized, right? You know you hear people talk about getting nationalized, right? So let's look what natural rule lies is. You brother, you got a, a, a black law dictionary. Get in the mic, get in the brother mic, I want you to read natural lies. Distinguished from nationalized. Get in the mic, I want you to read national, and, and don't go into the law case, just go into the substance of it. Now I want you to hear this, because you need to understand that although you're dealing with what you call rights and privileges, etc., they are limited and they're qualified. Which means a Russian can go to Russia and talk about sovereignty. A Chinese can go to Russia and have all the privileges and rights afforded to him or her under nat naturalization. But any abridgment, they can be removed because he's not the national land. Are we clear? This is why the Europeans start talking this, we all Americans just different color type stuff. So you and you fall into that stupid stuff and you just gave up your birthright. He's not American, he's European. Naturalized. Naturalized. 
You must know, in other words like this, our people in relationship to their obligation to enforce that constitution, clearly when they start talking, they're talking futile while trying to make an illogical argument. They're mixing the language. Here we go, Tony. Go ahead, read it. Can't hear you. Uh, go ahead. To confer, naturalize, to confer citizenship upon an ally. To make an alien. An alien. To Stop right there. So that's conferred citizenship. So that means the rights and the privileges and immunities are what? Conferred. In other words, they do not exist with them without a legislation op operation. It's an end legis operation that I'll, I'll reflect. So it's litigated, isn't it? What is that distinguished from unalienable right? An unalienable right cannot be what? Transferred or sold. So an unalienable right is related to a birthright, isn't it? So you understand why they don't want you to understand nationality? Because they want you to get your bloodline. So they can make your right and citizenship platform a 14th Amendment legislative, removable, adjustable, dissolvable privilege subject to abuse. This is what Duali warned you about. That's why I say go back to the state of mind of your ancient mother and your father. But as soon as you do, you'll find this stuff out. Divine warning by the prophet for the nations. You're living it right now. The reason I read it is because I wanted you to recognize it yourself, not because I said so. I'm pointing it out because I, I, I want to share with you the consciousness of paying attention to details and the importance of it. Not because I say so, because you need to understand it. Because if I was in opposition, as soon as you slipped up, I would have defeated your argument. I'm supporting it, so I'm trying to bring out where, you, where you're going. But if I was in opposition, I would let you say it. Everything you say, they crush it. Without telling you where your weakness is, this is what Europeans do to us every day. Yes. That's what barristers do to our people. We call a barratry argument. Write that down. B A R R A T R Y. Barratry. And the spurious arguments which are made under the straw, man of straw, transmitting utility, non gear, or all barratry arguments. It's not opinion, that's what operates. That's what's going on. That's what the feudal law, U.S. democracy platform was set up in 1871 for. And all persons that are employees of it are trained accordingly in unum sanctum policy. Not attitude, unum sanctum policy, that's their law book. That's why everybody that's in a position of power must be a mason. Because you have to be availed information that the masses don't have. It's perfect counsel. The information is not bad. The information is positive. But it can be used good or bad, can it? You know, we can go swimming in a, in, in a nice pool, we can go swimming in the ocean, can't we? We can drown in a cup of water. You need to understand that. And these people ain't playing with our people. They want to eliminate the air so they can claim the land. And our people keep practicing those things that keep allowing him the abridgments. Because one, they can't read, and two, they've been dealing with beliefs and not facts by training. And they refuse to render under Caesar the dogma system that he gave it to them because they keep lying and say Jesus gave it to them, or Allah gave it to them. This is where our problem is. Are we clear? And the Pope of Rome gave it to you. These people claim to be worshiping Jesus, they worship in Constantine. Why are they catching hell? And you try to tell them, you can show them the record. And they'll look, look at you like your head screwed on backwards. Meanwhile, the world moves on. You gotta understand, the world moves on, but they keep waiting for us. You weren't given a chance. The world ain't gonna keep waiting on us. And we're already at that stage where the world's no longer waiting on us. The issue is that so many of our people are asleep, that this stiff stuff is getting ready to get very bloody and chaotic and really horribly ugly. 
And so if there's any good that's left, reach for it. But understand that half the stuff won't be going anyway. In order to prevent such negative potentiality. That's where will comes in. That's where your willpower comes in. You know, put it in simple terms. You know what we talked about before? Everybody been claiming their gods and Jesuses and Allahs and Moses and Muhammad and Buddhas and everything. This is what is suggested to every man, woman, and child right now. You better call your God yesterday and hope he ain't running. That's where you are right now. And if he's real, he better step up. And the ones that ain't stepping up, that's your first proof that they're fake. Are we clear? And that's not meant for an insult. That's meant because that's the reality of what you're facing right now. Which means all the fiction that people have been putting their energy in, every breathing being on this planet is going to be forced in this present time to prove their God claims. That's one, that's one of the first things that's on the spiritual table right now. You can claim with God, call him. Not because I said so, but you're going to discover you're going to need to call him. If he don't answer, you better dump him. You better find out what's real. The Rome is accelerating conversion. And it was like right now. Everybody on the diving board, they've been talking about they could die. Right? What they don't know right now is anybody walk on that board, they're going to jump in that pool whether it's got water in it or whether it's dry. Because right now they're going to get pushed whether they decide it. Because that's how nature's going right now. In other words, nature is, is, you know, it's like this. You know, like when you, when you read a chart and you look at the different energies that women bring beings here on the earth and you can look at the math of a moon and the math of the planets and pretty, give a pretty much reading for the birthmark of that being. And things are guided by that principle. Well, what you're dealing with right now on a great scale of humanity in this prayer age, while all of those things still, in from a divine perspective, they do count, there's this big room that's sweeping humanity at large. In other words, in spite of whatever. And if you're not evolving, you will be followed. You're either going to be productive or you will be fertilizer for whatever's coming after. But this thing is going to be clean any kind of way you look at it. The deal is, it is not unlike um, a good farmer that looks at a field that has been windblown and tries to save the crop, whatever save it knowing that whatever is not stable is going to be turned under. It is exactly like that. And it's not because I say so. I say look around, pay attention to what you're seeing, and pay attention to what Rome is doing, because Rome is coming out in the open, which means they're getting more blunt. They used to hide stuff in programs. They're coming out now, they ain't going to be doing no programs. They're going to say, you know, our people be walking around talking about Black Lives Matter, and the CEO will say, no, they don't. Open where be, they'll say around the corner type things before. They're going to be more blunt. Which means they're not going to invest in programs. They're going to be more and more just cold hearted. And you either want to, you either want to have your God, whatever you say, you, in other words, like this. You say, you come to the club and you say, oh, man, y'all should hear me play. Dr. Niles, she knows I can play that saxophone and stuff, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's, yeah, man. Yeah, man, I'm the best nerd. And you go to the trunk and say, oh, I got the saxophone. You go to the trunk. I start, I got a cold right now. <laughs> you know, and this is what everybody's going to be doing with their idol gods that they've been giving all their finance to for all these generations, building all these beautiful buildings. Guess what? Whoever she, we, it, them, him, however poor or singular, they were calling yesterday, and I guarantee that most of them are running also from Rome. So, my brother, once we... Not once. Qualify that. Continue. But continue the thought. We accept that this is true. No, don't. 
don't accept it, even no, though we no, have come no. into no, no, no the truth is, is or it isn't. Yeah, no. We know this is true. We know that our lands have been taken from us. We know that a straw man has been associated with us. Do we use? Do we know that? Do our people know that? Or do you know that? A few of us in here know that. In mass, we do not know that. All right. So now, what you want to do is make sure, in in an intelligent manner, that those around you know and comprehend what you're saying. Better not just in words, but put it in writing. Rome spent generations burning books to bring our people to darkness. Those who have light are responsible to put it back into a book and put it before the world. That's your duty and your responsibility. Okay. All right, you want your estate? Don't seek your estate. Seek to give the estate to someone else. And nature will take care of you. That's how this thing is working. This keeps your selfishness out of it because that's contaminated. See, the deal of it is, and this is true, understand this. It's not judgmental, it's true. The energy that you're in now commands unselfish service. If you can comprehend that without being or allowing yourself to be abused, you can understand the Aquarian energy. If you don't, you'll be taken out with the Piscean lords who are being unseated. And those are the ones he'll take with them first. But they believe him anyway. They don't know that he's just using them for a ride that he's going to eliminate them. Everybody that's been helping Rome keep this BS going, thinking they're going to get a tappy, get a poison pill. That's why you must be careful with your words. If you mean well, think before you speak, and let it be from your heart pure for the good of others. Go ahead, continue. Federal Reserve. Stay in the mic, please. The Federal Reserve has the capacity to issue debt. The issues. operators, the Federal Reserve can't do anything. It's an artificial entity constructed on paper. Cannot speak, does not breathe, has no heart to sympathize, gives nothing. The owners of the Federal Reserve platform so the owners. have designated for themselves hegemony powers to do such and such and such a thing, say it. The owners of the Federal Reserve. Yes, and, and if you choose to, you can name some of them, but always put the living before the dead instrument, or the dead entity. What do you mean by that statement? Why, why did Rome set up personage after they closed the Freedman's Bureau and gave personage to their private corporation for conversion purposes? So that people can start talking to the entity as a living person, so they can convert your estate to it. So you start talking about, well, the IRS wrote me yesterday, and the city of Wilmington said, I gotta take my training wheels off and stuff, or I gotta pay a fine. You better talk about living man or woman that signed something or made some declaration, and they're using that entity as a platform. You speak okay. the platform first, the rest of your argument is dead because you just not gave up your birthright. Okay. And I know it's hard, but I'm, I'm reminding all of us because Good. if we're going to help each other, yeah. we're going to have to change our language. They've trained us in connotative language, okay. linguistics, and we must be aware of it. Because when we're here, we will correct each other and we're forgiven. When you get in the ring, however, Swoosh. Wow, he punched me for real. Uh -huh. You were on that side of the ropes. You're not in the gym training. You get in that ring. If you didn't respect the game before you got in the ring, <laughs> you understand? this is the same thing. We are here discussing details. 
semantics it's called. Write that down. They do semantics in their training. They are trained in semantics and they will speak to you in semantics, trusting that you will follow their lead into the pit. Because that's how it works. Because it's all about the word. It really is. It really is. And so understand, I'm not critiquing what you're saying because I comprehend where you're going when you said it, even before you said it. But when the words come out your mouth that tell me you're in a connotative platform, our desire to help each other is to, to make everyone cognate that we must stop speaking in the connotative platform, which is designed to support the feudal law operations that we're suffering. So you must consciously come out of the language that supports the feudal law and go into the language that supports alonium. Uh, and, and, and that's the only reason I'm checking you. Now, in just a casual conversation, I know just where you're going, I know just what you're talking about. But because we're projecting this to other people, they're going to pick up on this. And if they pick on the, that, the opposition will see the opening. You know, it's like you getting in the ring, talking trash, doing selfies. And then come back with two black guys talking about the ref jumped you. <laughs> no, the ref probably didn't jump you. In other words, your opposition will not take the mercy to correct you that we're doing here. Right. Because we must be prepared to grow into the real world. We're suffering a lot of these things because people who were supposed to tell you these things before did not tell you. They failed to tell you on two points. They themselves did not study. They themselves did not carry out what Noah Drawley said to enforce that constitution. And so here we are sitting with the burden of the result of a cause that took place around 1927, 1928, when certain persons infiltrated the Morris Divine National Movement to undermine Noble Drawley's operations and refused to teach civics and lied on the prophet, said the prophet did not teach civics, that he only taught religion. And now our people are suffering the constitutional violations that the prophet warned you about. Now the Romans come after all of your property, whether it's your bank account, your home, your job, your shoes, your sneaks, your cars, your food, and they're using weather wars too. Yeah. Because they're using technology that's ancient. It ain't new. People who don't understand this think it's new. High priests know that's old stuff. But the believers are being sacrificed to satisfy the priesthood who know they're being unseated. In other words, they're angry. And so they're doing vengeful things, too. They know they can't win on the long run. But rather than be graceful to sit down, they're going to take a lot of people out with them. They want to see misery. They live off of misery. They, they savor in human misery where you Somebody who likes french fries, savory, ketchup. And that's real. So when you're, you may, when I say I'm just for you, thinking that they're, you know, you're talking moral and ethical, that they got some kind of compassion, I suggest you not hold your breath and get real. So be careful. Write down connotation versus denotation. And then next to denotation, write hegemon. And keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. In your language. And again, like I said before, and I'm going to say again, connotative linguistics is put in place with semantics in order that when the people wake up, as they're doing right now, and start speaking against the operations that's, that the language is designed to actually support the operation. But because it's casually spoken every day, there appears on the surface to be no threat. Are we clear? 
But a social engineer recognizes it immediately and they will seize upon it. They're not going to tell you where they're seizing, they will seize upon it. Now let's look at this. I want to throw this at you and then I want you to continue with your thought. You're a little young and so you may not remember about 30, 35 years ago they were doing what's called site graphs or HMOs. All right, HMOs and site graphs, then uh, affidavits to the transportation department, then UCCs, financial statements, and then now birth certificates. Oh, oh, oh then the QCIC number on the Social Security, the red number, the QCIC number. All right, and also the creditor, the credit and the debit. This is the, the, social, the numbers on the Social Security instrument without the dashes. When the European uses it and they're transacting business in a name that sounds like yours, the dashes will be taken out of the Social Security number. That's on the creditor side. With the dashes, is the debtor side, which they give to you. All right? And it's leaned against your estate. Now, so when you understand and comprehend that this is the operation, don't think that they're letting you in to capture that. <laughs> that is their operation. Oh, oh good. That, that's not something interesting. That is their operation. But when you wake up, they have to put some kind of promise out there to keep you from rebelling or maybe hiding in the parking lot and hitting them with a tire iron on their big toe. So they, you know, if you do the QC number, and then you'll be able to discharge your account and stuff. And then, if you do a UCC 3 and UCC 9 financial statement and pay $1,500, and then you can get control of the system Q trust. And they went through that, and they went through the HMOs and site graph and the other things, so that didn't work, that burned out. Remember what they needed to do that. So now if you capture the birth certificate, that is no different than the HMOs, the transportation department instruments, UCCs, financial statements, QC number on so all of them are tied to that sister Q trust set up by the Pope of Rome at the fall of the Red House. How come they don't tell you about the Red House fall of the Red House when they set up the World Global Trust that all this stuff is tied to? Don't tell you that part, do they? So you think the Jesuits are going to say, oh, oh, here's the bag of cookies and the factory and the land that's on it? You just captured it? And we want to dissolve the United States operation and the military operation and the pharmaceutical war machine and stuff, the biological warfare we've been putting on y'all for generations with the fake cancers that we caused that you made you think is in nature? Because you've been cashing a birth certificate that's a bank bond they got 50,000 names on it. And to be the holder of due course, you must have the original. And what point you to know, holder of due course must produce original. Did you know that about contract law? Holder of due course, what's holder of due course? I'm asking you. Holder of due course is the original holder of that. So you talking the original or you talking about copies of anything? Oh, well, did, did, is that self-explanatory? Are they going to give you the original birth certificate that's, on, that's been on Water Street now? They got 59,000 signatures on it? Well, what make you or anyone else think that you're going to capture that damn birth certificate and have control of that trust? No, it must collapse. So they're just holding it out as a carrot for us? Yeah, yeah, of course, because the people are waking up. The point that I'm saying is don't try to get the apple, don't bite the apple. Be aware of it. It's beautiful, it's red, shiny and everything. Don't bite it. You hear me, I'm going to bite the apple and see it's up here and I got it in my hand and all that stuff. Don't bite that apple. Okay, in other words like this, this is Will, Will. We talked about Will. What I'm suggesting, now I'm not telling you to do, do what you will to do. I'm suggesting you to use willpower to rebut all of their claims. 
all of your communications rebut their claim. State your right of the state over and over again, no matter what they say. Are we clear? But don't bite any apple they give you. Thinking that you captured that certificate, you're not. Because it's not going to happen. Rome must fall. Rome does not share. So if we want, and that's a problem, you continue. You reasoning. I I, I I want to put you um, in, 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 a, in a previous um, session, a talking engagement. Go ahead, say it. Um, you were speaking on a queen. Um, queen of England. That's your middle party in London. No, it wasn't the Queen of England. It was a, it was a queen of um, of one of the estates in the Americas. Khalifa. They got a, they got a Mormons all over the place with the dreadlocks. That's not him. It's just that people who think they're black don't relate to that. They only relate to Rome. This particular queen, she wrote to uh, Herbert Walker Bush and claims to see. Oh, well, you talk. Which one are you talking about now? You talking about? Oh, you're talking uh, a recent. What are you talking? I, I I can't remember the name. Um, and you talking about recent then? It, yes, yes, this is in the past 20 years. Berdyasi. Hmm? Berdyasi. Yes. Yes. No, before she, before they murdered her. Well, yeah. Now he said recent. No, that's before, but that was before Bush. Before Bush? Oh yeah, that's before Bush. Thank you. Well, so the, the, this particular, um, this particular woman, she claimed her estate, and then at that point, she can issue. Would, would, okay, let, 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 let me put it in my context. So I create an estate, and this is separate from the fiction that's been created in Rome. Is it possible, or would it be wise to still interact with Rome since they're using- Are they occupying your land? You're almost forced to. How do you, how, and what is the, the universal principle upon which diverse parties interchange. It's already established. I mean, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, do you? Didn't know probably tell you to enforce that constitution? Yes. Well, why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? You see, you know what, this is why I read that from the beginning, because we keep trying to let them re-guide us off the platform. The constitution and the treaty is the platform. Not no daggone birth certificate. Not anything else created in color. Anything that's created in color remains in color. Logo, color. Anything that's created in color remains in color. You already said you're not Negro, Black, colored, or Ethiopian. Did he say that? I don't mean just complexion. Here, brother. Color. Get the mic. Color. Announce yourself, Brother George. <laughs> Color. Brother Troy. Brother Troy. Yeah, go ahead. Bay. Yeah. Franklin Bay. Yeah, go ahead. Color. An appearance, semblance, or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. Read that again. <laughs> Color. An appearance, semblance, or sim simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. Now stop for a minute. You now when some people can walk around talking about their people of color and proud of it, and what if they just told the world that they're fake? But they can't damn read. Then when they're treated according to, they want to get mad. But they're going to tell you about Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, Muhammad, and Buddha. And don't even know their bloodline. But that's the law. And the, what? Ignorance of the law is what? No, no excuse. Semantics. But factual wisdom. Continue. Right, uh, Go ahead, he's going to finish. He's going to finish. A prima facie or apparent right. Hence, a deceptive appearance. A deceptive appearance. A plausible, assumed exterior 
concealing a lack of reality. There you go. A disguise or pretext. Anyway. Now you see why nobody respects black people? We think human beings are colored. Because they're not part of the human family. It's a brand system for people who are property, are stock, and agree to be. Back to the divine morning by the prophet said, when we stop practicing those names and principles that delude to slavery, that this great sin must be removed from the land and to save from earthquakes, diseases, ETC, everything you're suffering from right now. Are we clear? Choice of words, they're not accidental, what I'm trying to say to you. Now, if you were to have an open conversation with most of our people and dispense this information, they would take it as your opinion. This stuff is documented. And they're held to it irregardless. So if you or I or anyone is dealing in diversity, Article 3, Section 2, the American Constitution, read it. Article 3, Section 2. I want you to pay attention to this. Constitution. Who has a Constitution? I know y'all got it. Y'all come get both down. <laughs> All right, who's the first one who got a constitution? All right, get a brother Mike. Get a brother Mike. Article 3, section 2. Get in the mic. extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution, the laws of the United States, and treaties made, or which shall be made, under their authority, to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction, to controversies to which the United States shall be a party, to controversies between two or more states, between a state and citizens of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state claiming lands under grants of different states, and between a state or the citizens thereof, and foreign states, citizens or subjects. In all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, and those in which a state shall be party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. In all the other cases before, before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact, which such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress shall make. The trial of all crimes, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury. And such trials shall be held in the state where the said crime shall have been committed. But when not committed within any state, the trial shall be at such place or places of, as the Congress may be, may by law have directed. All right, that's all basically. Now, how many of you are familiar with the divine constitution by law? For the Moore's Holy Temple of Science, Moore's Science Temple of America. So raise your hand. All right, good brother. Article 1, Act 1 of the Divine Constitution by Law. Get the mic. Is the mic over there? Give the mic. Act 1.
Now I want you to pay attention to the correlations. Correlation is very important. And keep in mind, we opened up with the divine one by the proper formation, right? And satisfy your answer. You have a difficulty finding it, brother? Yeah. Divine Constitution Bylaw, Act 1. You know by here, speak it. She knows by heart. The grand chief and chairman are empowered to make law and to enforce law. And it is known before the members. All right. So that you can see that they were put in power to enforce law. Right. And then they turn around, many of them said it's wrongly to two cities. And of course they're in violation of the charge. Divine warned by the proper for the nation, and they have not enforced that constitution, which is why you all are suffering today, all of us. And Rome has been stealing your estates when it should have been put in check. Act, he read Article 3, Section 2. That's called diversity. So when you're communicating with a foreign party by treaty or constitution, you can see that the constitution is an international platform. If there's a controversy between what? Citizens of the same, same state or even what? Different states or foreign states. That's diversity, is it not? Yeah. Isn't that the platform? Is, did they say that the platform is the birth certificate? They say platform is using the number of social security that was set up by corporate operatives? No. We'd be doing everything but what we were told to do, which is why we keep getting screwed. You see the point? That's where their obligation is, to the Constitution and Treaty. Now, let's go to Pope Francis' letter. Now, he, he owns the Roman Curia, right? We know that they, that they have um, that they have abridgments going on. We know that, right? And we know that they got a uh, um, civil disorder in the ranks. However, Grand Chief, is, is this the letter that he recently wrote? Yeah, that's the letter that, that, that he did with, um, through uh, Anna von Reese for presenting it. That's not all the corporations that stop with these ones. That, that exactly, to Obama. Now, we already know, let's, let's go to this beginning right here. Let's go to this beginning right here. Remember the divine word by the prophet for the nation while we read this. The original of the your constitution and government for the United States of America at North America, having a Republican form of government set forth in the status at Article 4, Section 4, stands as the supreme law of the land. The organic constitution was altered by acts of misprision and was secretly overthrown and converted into a foreign privately owned and deemed for profit corporation in the year 1871. See Act of Congress 1871. We're all aware of that, right? So you already know that that whole platform and everybody on it is knowingly a fraud. Are we clear? It's not opinion. It's established right. It's established fact. It's documented. But let's go. And they're all members of the Roman Fury. Now, of course, y'all you have this Daniel Obama talking to his boss. <laughs> right? Right. And so Obama, did Obama show you, you the true American flag? What's, what's he supposed to do? Lay on the railroad track? Did, did Michelle go to the Alhambra? Did she wear a red dress? She ain't Dorothy, though. Know. Now, let's look at here. Let's, let's go down here.
No more is executive or otherwise issued by Barack H. Obama pretending authority on the land of the American states while operating as quote unquote president of the United States Corporation, nor as president quote unquote of the United States of America minor, or owed any performance by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Ham, or any ordinary capital O. All plainly stated grants of contractual authority evident in the Constitution for the United States of America remain in place, subject good faith performance of the accompanying obligations and treaties. So that not back up what you all only told you 100 years ago? What did he tell you to do? Help him in the great missionary work to enforce that Constitution, did he? So if you're dealing with them, you come to them with constitutions and treaties. That's where their obligation is. Not until birth certificate. Cease and desist. Who was supposed to be saying that? The grand sheets and the sequences of the Moorish Science Temple of America. That, they were set in place to do that. Did they do that? No. No, they told the people that draw in the two cities. And now you're suffering. Did he warn you that it, if it was not carried out, that the worst was yet to come? Uh -huh. So now we're here in the house of reawakening minds. Many of you are experiencing the worst, and we're trying to bring remedy the best we can, but it's dependent upon you, because every man, woman, and child will stand on their own square, confess their own, because you were the heir from the beginning. For right. all you to make your claim is called abandonment. And they've been doing what? Converting your estate all the time while we've been playing around. With our belief systems, they were converting your estates. Yeah. And now the dude who hit the fan, and now everybody want to get in the race with training wheels. Don't expect to win. Kind of fast though. <laughs> I mean, because this is really where we are. And it's not a joke. It's shameful because this was brought to you 102 years ago. And three orders were set up to deliver it to you. And then Marcus Garvey set up government structures to help teaching government structures. These people worship them rather than study what they're telling you. And now the dude who hit the fan went through the fan, now we're all in trouble. Not that the tools weren't there, we haven't been using them. And it wasn't worth bad turns, this stuff would have been really worse. They put the European in check a little bit. But one for the Manchurians, they eliminated a lot more of us. And they tell me what the position is. Look, Mr. Obama is president of a governmental services corporation. Is that a country? No, not the country. So is Trump the president of a country or a governmental services corporation under contract? Yes, yes. So our people don't even understand government. They keep talking trash, which makes them incompetent. And we're trying to get you to be competent. Are we clear? And when you're talking to these people, you talk to them with competence. Constitutions and treaties. But if you haven't studied them, you're ill-prepared, aren't you? So you let European studies... See, you captured the birth certificate. You get the aim on that 60 kids class. Only of course, it's 500. <laughs> we'll take you through this process and stuff. This is 1500. <laughs> and people keep falling for it. That's why I asked you for you to remember with HMOs and site drafts, then affidavits to address the taste of the department, then the UCC, financial statement, and now the birth certificate. They're all for the same purpose, is what I'm trying to tell you. And if the first one was successful, you would need this one. But if they understood, you can't be holding in due course without an original anything, and Rome ain't giving up her power. Do you understand? You must rebut and refute Rome. You must stop feeding the vampire. Take that straw out your neck. Might be hot when you go in there talking to him wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> you talk about loosen up, no, don't loosen up. Because <laughs> they hate playing. 
We told you all a couple of years ago, I was going to resolution was it 2847? 2847, I got it. gonna take all your bank accounts. They ain't yours, it's theirs. That's right. See, our people won't listen to anything. They need big boots. They need one half their keystroke kicked off before they recognize they lost weight. I'm serious, it's, it's almost like they're like hard hearted. You can tell them facts, show them documents, and they'll go back to that nigger game. And then complain about the nigger game. You know what I'm saying? It's not that this information wasn't important to them 152 years ago, but it was. They didn't want it. <laughs> they want to buy bullshit dollar, a $50 million dollar plane. Go deliver the word to the islands where Jesus was. He worked for Rome. They, they said he was working for Jesus. Was. They remember the Roman curia, like all the rest of them like guys are. That's why we gave you all what? Show you the Roman, show you the, the, the clergy's oath. The whole world knows that. The only people know that is these people that think you would be in the grounds. And you tell them they think you're attacking their beliefs. So you do say it, expose them to it, and keep it moving. And then try to save some of the youth that are coming up that, that may be saved. But most of these are going to be, they're going to be eliminated. Big question. Go ahead. Quick. We're fighting against Rome. They are a formal, a Rome formal fighting against you. enemy. We're fighting back against them. What can we do? Is there anything we can do? Short of, in addition to teaching everybody that we come in contact with, you that surprised. will make Rome at You'd rest. be surprised that's about all you need to have been doing. It's just we're late in race. Because it's all willpower. This is why when Rome is charged to the wall, Rome will, Rome will tell you the sum. Say, y'all stop talking trash. All I did was call, you follow. Which means you have the power. It is by your will that Rome has power. You keep giving it to him. And then accuse him of you misusing it. He keep telling you that he got no power for you what you gave him. And somebody tells you all about jurisdiction, you don't want to hear it. And we ain't into that. That ain't part of my religion. Well, you just told it. And so Rome claiming jurisdiction over your estate. It's called hypothecation. You were told that too. <coughs> Not only told it, showed the documents. So people don't want to accept it. It's still fine. Rome was liquidating. And you want to take any people down with them while they're playing around. Because they're busy taking care of Reverend Jones, who they don't know working for Rome. You got a 501c3 skull and bone degree lying and saying this for Jesus. Y'all, write this down. Lyndon Baines Johnson. The 501c3 control agreement. And just read it in your spare time. If you think these people. Their so-called tax break 501c3 is for Jesus and the Lord for teaching the Lord's word. You're up to that on lunch. Lyndon Baines Johnson what? Lyndon Baines Johnson, the 501c3 fake religious tax break control agreement for marching nigger leader preacher guys. Who fake and lie and says with Jesus. That you keep, that our people keep on thinking, but see, they get tax break and then the word of the Lord of God says so Jesus. And so they don't pay tax. Yeah, yes, for Rome. And Lyndon Baines Johnson is the main head. He's the, he's, he's the grand dragon for them. Why they all march around talking about the 14th Amendment. Why don't y'all be Negro citizens and, and that's March of 14th Amendment and you get your voting rights and 
seven rings in the stack. <laughs> yeah, right. Or do the men you're stuck. <laughs> You know, the main thing I'm saying is we got to get over ourselves and stop trying to protect the images of black leaders who you don't know have been selling you out. Just because they run around talking about Allah and Jesus and Muhammad and stuff. You understand? No, we, we got to stop being naive. That's what I'm saying to you. Uh, for example, uh, you was talking about how they going to come out and be uh, blunt. Uh, with the statements, and uh, I was watching this uh, uh, program, and they had this uh, police stop this European lady, and she told the European uh, police that she was scared to get her quote-unquote license that she might get shot. And he stated bluntly, and it was on tape that only people we shoot is black people. And it's true. And he, he, was, he was honest. He was honest because that's what the tag is, because it's a little type of policy. He said black, he didn't say Yeah, because that's property. It was like a dog, cattle. They agree to be black, don't they? After they closed the Freedman's Bureau, they sent Christian black codes and actually adopted in 1724 in all the corporate states to, um, to um, deal with the defeated Moors who were, were branded and they wrote black and thought. They agreed to be black. They're expendable because they're not protected by international law. They're not part of the nation. Is it on constitutions and treaties between nation states? Is it reparations between nation states? Since when Negro monkey become a nation? <laughs> Try to like Negro, we'll look at the dictionary. It's a monkey. So you got a bunch of people that like to be niggers or Negroes or black and then try to act like it's an identity instead of a brand, which is a brand. But they want to make it be something it's not because they're dealing with Ebonics and stuff, because somebody said that. That's a color platform. Did we just, did he just read what color is? Global? Right. So if there's a treaty and constitution to be enforced, you must name the parties, must be. Huh? What Negro nation did a treaty or constitution with any civilized people on Earth planet? What Negro nation built any pyramid? Those are all contemporary brands set up by Dutch masters for defeated Moors and other Muslim Asiatics who were defeated under the Spanish Inquisition to designate their property distinguished from free men. With free men or free women, they might be Nigerian, they might be Zimbabwean, they may be Sierra Leone, they may be Belize, but if their property is black or Negro, that's how you can tell the difference. And they would open their mouth and say that. This is their, their property. And they're treated accordingly. And property can't own property. This is why the brands were created to steal the estate. It's not secret, is it? But don't they keep agreeing to be black? Then why they complain about the black codes? Civilized people have nationalities. What makes us think we different? Islam, um, I've noticed lately that there are several um, ancestry and DNA um, uh, testing organizations that are popping up and they are advertising on, on stations, on programs like Jerry Springer, and after Jerry Springer, Mari Post, stuff we watch, you know, the, the ratchet stuff. And they are telling many of our people by the time they get this ancestry back, it's interesting how they're typing, typing them out, and it's like they're putting every nationality in for a more but who we are. Yeah. I mean, they'll somebody will get there. The deal to disconnect you from the land. Right, and it, and it's so prevalent now. And mm -hmm. people, once you get these things, you think because it's coming from DNA truth. That's one of the names. That is true. 
but what it's really doing is, you know, disconnecting, disconnecting us from who we really are. And I, I just caution people um, on those things. Not only that, um, a couple go. people have done it uh, right, more than once. And got different results. Where they've taken brothers and sisters, same family, same mother and, and father, they got different. Sent, them, sent them to the same at different times, and then sent them to others, and they have different readings on all of them. I saw that too. You know, but it's like anything else. It's, you know, it's a game and it's a business. And it gives, you know, people hope that, that are generally hopeless. People who don't know themselves. But like, at the same time, with the consideration real, um, all scientists and anthropologists on the planet will not deny that no matter who they trace, except for a small handful, small handful, and, and it is more recent than past, can be traced to the Asiatic African woman, the whole human family. Hey, so when, you, when they're talking about anything about these differences that they're making, you know, and then they'll turn around and then put the code on her. And yet, the Pope and them go in their chambers and bow down to the what? The Moabite woman. The dummies or the slaves who call her Black Madonna. That's because they're slaves. She ain't no damn Black Madonna. She ain't nobody damn property. And our people are out today on lunch. But again, um, a lot of the ignorance and a lot of suffering that we get, we deserve because we keep claiming to know these mystery gods. If we know all this, how dare us continue to perpetrate these frauds upon the civilized world and then get complaining because of the results we get. When these are contemporary brands set up by the Europeans. I'll get, I'll get you in a minute. We got two, two over there too. Um, I just wanted to explain why we are holders <coughs> of due course. And it comes from uh, one of the documents that Drew Ali um, divinely prepared. And it comes from chapter 47. Exactly. Um, the, uh, Egypt, the capital empire of the uh, dominion of Africa. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. The old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the beginning of Mexico, the first true and divine name of Africa. Dividing the land between the father and the son. The dominion of Cush was northeast and southeast Africa. And northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan empire. With uh, their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan uh, seeking homes. And, I, I, and, and you are, goes on to say you are what your mother, you know, what, what your forefathers and foremothers are. So we are at the holders in due course. And this this is one of the documents that Drew Ali held, held up. Besides the one on one, he said, now go save yourselves. I've given you everything to save the nation. Now go save yourselves. This is an affidavit that has never been refuted, rebutted, or corrected. So this is this is part of the civics, this is part of the religion, because religion is law, order, and governmental principles. And this is this is government in here. So I'm just demonstrating why we are the true possessors and why we are the original holders in due course. Is that? Yes. Uh, now, point in fact. Mm -hmm. In law, what occurs when the heir of an estate demonstrates incompetence 
does not honor their mothers and fathers, don't recognize their own pedigree. In law, are they are they heritable? Yeah. Non descendant. They will be called wards of the state, but they're not. Yes. So whoever's administrating has option to deal with it as they will, and this is what they've been doing. Doing what? Expending and dissolving your estate while getting the benefit. That's exactly what they've been doing. That's why it's called in congressional work, hypothecation. That's where they create instruments, put a claim on it, and this is why all full foreclosures are called abandonments, because it's an estate. And then when you start waking up, they start talking about saying you know, gold and silver coin, and therefore then you start arguing gold and silver, and it ain't the issue. Never really was. Because the gold and silver come from the land. <laughs> We're out to lunch. You keep coming in. We're trying to get you how to think. All right. Get the way. I wanted to add on to what uh, Sister Naila said, but then I wanted to add on to um, additional exhibits, if you will, other than Chapter 47, because I like to um, be able to take this information and be able to apply it now. So there's a great, there's a lot of resources that are online that are actually books that are like $13,000. And this one book is called America Being the, um, it's the whole, the title of the book is like paragraph, but it's America being the latest and most accurate description of the new world containing the original of the inhabitants and the remarkable voyages thither, the conquest of the vast empires of Mexico and Peru and other, blah, 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 right? Okay? It's under, um, I have a Pinterest called The Emancipator Files, which, because I have a magazine called The Emancipator, so I use that to, like, for publishing purposes, but I always post, like, my research there. But in that book, and this book covers 1600 to 1676, yeah. in that book it talks about how masonry and all that type of stuff in the original Egypt at that time was called America. So that coincides with chapter 47, because a lot of people, they're, they're not able to, have, they don't have a filter, so when they hear Africa, they automatically assume what is misnomered as Africa now, they don't know that it's talking about a Mexican. So one, y'all need to go download that book, ASAP, you know, before they take it off and people start getting hit to it because there's so much information in it and pictures, but right now, you can Google it and get the downloaded PDF. I mean, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, and it's like $13,000. And then I wanted to testify about the DNA test because I used to belong to a society and that um, promoted us taking DNA tests so we could put that on the record, and, and I did. And um, I actually started doing research and spent a lot of time documenting my family on my father's side. And that research did not coincide with, with the so-called ancestry test. This ancestry test had me all West Africa and all this type of stuff. But I went down to Jeffersonville, Georgia, and making Georgia look like, so we've always been here. So y'all seen all this land that we've been on, we've always been here. And then the same thing for in Virginia. And not only did I, I had a problem because my great grandmother was born on a reservation, but she was labeled as Negro. And I understand because according to the records, and I'm talking about the US census and the birth records, her parents were considered Indian, so how was she labeled a Negro? So I'm like, oh, I gotta go do the research, and I post all this stuff, I'm a bunny child, by the way, and I find things like this, and I want y'all to document this type of stuff, because this is how we can apply, and this is more proof about who we are, so we can attach this to the affidavits and the things that we have, now as proof, like we're not just coming out our behinds, because people, a lot of times, they just want to discriminate, like, oh, you say you're a Moorish American, no, no, I really am. So, Act 1, it is enacted that all servants which shall be imported into this country, either by sea or by land, whether Negroes, Moors, Mulattoes, or Indians, are hereby a judge deemed and taken to be slaves, all intents and purposes, any law, usage, or custom, to the contrary notwithstanding. Bill 1969, page 46. Then I found, the evidence indicates that blacks in Virginia and in the South were not originally identified as racially different from the European Southerners, but religiously different they were Moors, or at least non-Christians. Now we all know in the treaty, we're described as what? You got, as, as the Muslims. You got the Christian powers and you have the Muslim powers. So they're saying in these laws, like listen, when we get these people, 
Like, this is how we're gonna document them. They're gonna be one Negro, they're gonna be more, they're gonna be, like, they, you know, Christian and all types of stuff. And that was Thompson, 1975, PP.288 to 289, um, semicolon 116. And then finally, and I'm saying all this because of these ancestry tests, so people feel as though they want to go to the ancestry test, like for the quick, you know, whatever. And also, you gotta remember, I looked up all of those tests. All of those tests are ran by three major companies, and all those companies are in cahoots with the Mormons and the Christian powers and stuff like that. So their job is to make sure that we have no entitlement to this land. So they yes. have put us elsewhere, all right? Then finally, there was, I don't know, I wanna keep going, but I don't wanna keep you know taking up the time. But yeah, I'm always finding this stuff, and I, pay, I post this stuff on this, on a, um, something called the Emancipator Files because, um, that's what I'm using as a newspaper so that you know, I can publish everything. So example, like I actually did change my attribute. Like I'm not using their stuff, I use my own stuff in the quarter common pleas here, I won't put it on the record today. And that's how I did it. Like you just publish your stuff in your own way. You know what I mean? So you can use their stuff and make sure you publish with your own also. Right? What's the name of the book again? Oh Lord, mercy. Uh, people are how could you can just Google the first part. America Get the mic, being the so latest and most mic, accurate. Use the mic. America being the latest and most accurate description of the new world, containing the original of the inhabitants and the remarkable voyages thither, the conquest of the vast empires of Mexico and Peru. Like, that's all you need. I mean, Taj, it goes so deep, it starts talking about the eagle. And, you know, how they just stole, like, in this yeah, book. Feel, yeah, it's, it's, like, amazing, like... It's just crazy, like the stuff that they just in your face. Yeah. It's, it's never been yeah. Is is there an author? A lot of people, people is just by them not knowing themselves, John, they dismiss John Ogilby. Is John Ogilby. O G I L B Y. Ogilby. Ogilby. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now again, <laughs> now this is redundant, but this is for those who are less familiar. And when we talk about um, um, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Now this is a congressional record which most of you are aware of, but, but since some of you are, are, are new here, you know, um, this will be uh, uh, for your edification. Con Article 3, convinced that the principles of religion contribute most powerfully to keep nations in the state of passive obedience which they owe to their princes, the high contracting parties declare to be their intention to sustain in their respective states those measures which the clergy may adopt. With the aim of ameliorating their own interests, intimately connected with the preservation of the authority of the princes and the contracting powers join in offering their thanks to the Pope for what he has already done for them and solicit his constant cooperation in their views of submitting the nations. So you see that the clergy is delivering the people to the Pope while saying that they're delivering them to Jesus. And this is the congressional records. And this is known by all scholars, always has been. This is known by all religious leaders, always have been. How come they don't show this to their believers? Because most of them have a 501 c 3 skull and bone kickback agreement they get a piece of the spoils. You know, so, you know, once you um, start really doing serious research, you will lose, lose your naivety. And stop thinking that these people don't know what they're doing to you. Understand it's your naivety that makes you think they're not conscious of what they're doing. You're the one out for lunch. They're not. All right? Um, now I want to go, hold on, to the General Education Board, right? Now this goes, um, this is the Rockefeller Foundation that controls all your school systems here in North America, right? Now I want you all to read in harmony the philosophy page. Read the philosophy page, and this is for all of our people 
who keep on sending their children to Rome and expecting an education. Let's read this together, y'all. Philosophy, founders of the General Education Board, John D. Rockefeller and Frederick T. Gates, 1902. In our dreams, we have limitless resources and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our moaning hands. The present education conventions fade from their minds and unhampered by tradition, we work our own goodwill upon a grateful and responsive rural folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of learning or men of science. We have not to raise up from among them authors, editors, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for embryo, great artists, painters, musicians, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, of whom we have an ample supply. The task we set before ourselves is very simple, as well as a very beautiful one. To train these people as we find them to a perfectly ideal life just where they are. So we will organize our children and teach them to do in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way in the homes, in the shops, and on the farm. So that's your education philosophy, and what do we do? We go into debt to send our children to them, not only to be miseducated, but pay for it and leave them in debt. And it's all planned, and it's right there in their philosophy page of the General Education Board. How many parents even read that, yet they send their children to them and have false expectations, talking about the children who aren't well-educated, as if they read this or have some other expectation, which shows not only their naivety, but their irresponsibility. Now you see why Raleigh said every temple must have a school? Mm -hmm. Well, where's schools? Uh, They've been collecting funds, though. Um, Solid Weapons for Card Wars and Introductory Programming Manual, 
Operations Resource Technical Manual, TMWS 7905.1. Keep in mind, all politicians have this in their possession. All politicians. And all people who are members of your higher degrees of all secret societies. This is one of their manuals that they operate running the municipalities. In 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power for the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern that of dominance revolved around the subject of the energy sciences. Energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Keep this in mind. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science. And the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeper. Are we clear? And this is what they've been doing to you. This is King Albert, Rex 84. All right? But I'm gonna go to another section. These are concentration camps for you all looking at these maps. Intelligence. 
Therefore, they do not know how to cry out for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually to the public, the public of just adopts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological, be it economic, becomes too great and they crack up. And this happens to our people every day. They don't know that this is a military operation. They think it's mere opinion. Or somebody just don't like their skin or something like that. And they're actually under military psychological warfare. When a silent weapon is applied gradually to the public, the public adjusts the docks to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological, be it economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Wow. This is why they keep data on it. I'll be clear. They operate from this perspective. This is not their opinion. This is military operations. This is military operations every day. And so if you're not aware of it, you keep thinking that you just happen to have economic problems. You just think your cousin just happened to lose their job on Thursday. All of it is kept in data and all of it is manipulated to make sure that you don't get out of the hole. Are we clear? Then you have all kinds of, of, of so-called saving funds and retirement funds and they steal it, manipulate it, etc. to make sure that you lose control of all your property so they can steal it. This is how it's done. It's military operations. It's not accidental. How do you counter this? You teach someone who does not know, teach yourself, rebut, rebut, rebut. Speak clearly, get away from commentative linguistics, Get back to the constitutional principles that we already told you a hundred years ago, and let's keep this work going. And that's how you defeat Rome. Outside of that, you lose. And that's it. Well, any questions? Good. Islam. Um, I'm watching some of the um, reports from some, some of the um, camps, not camps, I guess they are sort of camps, the shelters, but they appear to be more like FEMA camps. So they are. From, as a result of Harvey, and I would assume also. Which they um, and some of the conditions that the people are living under, and also that some zip codes, particularly, I forgot the zip code in Texas, where they were literally forgotten and, and ignored and it was mainly wars, excuse me, that lived in that particular zip code. But that the conditions were where they had armed guard, they had guards um, with, I guess, with loaded weaponry and they were doing a lot of things. No, and, and so it seems like a lot of these people may never return to any, and you talked about the loss of economic power. So, so normalcy, like they're trying to get people used to living in yes. these kinds of situations. Yes. And, and then there are the, the number that will not survive as a result of the conditions. Exactly. So if it's all, you know, we talk about weather wars, a deliberate act on the part of shadow government. That they are POW camps. They are POW camps. Whether people like it or not, that's what they are. And the same way they remove people off the land in, in, in New Orleans, same thing they're doing there. And it, it will continue, and it's expanding. Go ahead. It's right. How do they cause the time waves in the hurricanes that we're experiencing? Talk about the bottom. This is a uh, reverse, reverse engineering technology that they've been exercising since actually the late 30s. Uh, getting more perfected in about, in about the 40, between the 43 and the 45 era. 
much of which they uh, uh, got from some of the German scientists uh, that were sent over after uh, Hitler went to the Antarctic, etc. It's not new, it's not new stuff. It's old, it's called seeding. One is seeding, and the other is using microwaves pinpointed from different angles, just like you do triangles at certain points in the atmosphere that create those eyes that you see in the storm, etc. Eating, eating, and then re removing. It's because it's all vibration. And also, uh, certain areas of, uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, water where the uh, hurricanes and tropical storms begin by them uh, uh, using um, microwave and other technologies or light technologies, radio waves, to actually move courses, uh, temperature courses, they, that causes the general flow, the average natural flow of waters from the Antarctica, uh, Antarctica and from the poles around the west and the east side of the both the Atlantic and uh, Pacific to change slightly. And then you, then you have uh, new weather patterns because the water, the heated water, has a, a, a lot of effect on the uh, hurricanes. This is why you see many of them have moved up. Their tradition, they would start lower, but some of them have moved up. And they can use uh, heart and other technologies to kind of move them. It's not perfect, but uh, close enough that they can pretty much send them where they want to send them. No different than they created that drought in California for the last seven odd years so they can buy land. You know, stuff like that. You know, so it was, it was uh, um, hurricanes, most of them, even though some of them were struck after, most of them are, are, are weather wars. Yeah. But that's not, that's not new technology, that's old, that's old stuff. So this this has been incredibly powerful um, speaking. This has been an incredibly powerful uh, speaking engagement, and um, it's amazing to, to hear how we're being attacked on so many different fronts from, from our lack of education, from the, the machines that they're using in order to disrupt the vibrations of the atmosphere, ionosphere. But they're going multiple levels. Yes, deep, you know, even you know. even into the, 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 the food that we eat and the water or yes. we drink. Our um, genocide operation. It's 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 horrible. You know the, the water the water is our foundation. Let me I, I yeah, support what you're saying right now. Just hold the thought. Yeah. And let's go to the security page. And I want you to like it, I want you to read the security page. Of the public, 
uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquests, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said persons or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach with, which is ruthless, uh, ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with full and objectivity, and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without a loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interests. Do not deviate from them. This publication. Says, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War called the Quiet War, being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies and its weaponry. May 1979. Number? Number 74-1120. Now, how many of our people are sitting around talking about worrying about whether Trump is going to start World War III? World War III started Mike. Mike. actually Mike. before right. 1979. Yeah. Right. Silently, right in your face. And we've been the target. And our paid off leaders have been paid to run around talking about we got to make them like our color. And you are somebody. And they're racist. When it actually own them sanctum policy? Mike. Mike. Own them sanctum policy. It's actually own sanctum policy. And King Alfred Rex 84, Executive Order 11490, and Breaking the Morals. And, and, the and the job of the politicians to keep you pacified, marching and praying, thinking you just got to change somebody's attitude. And this is what they're operating on this matter. And more and more now that things are getting really bad, they're just coming more and more blunt rather than hiding it behind any programs because the people for the most part are dumbed down so much that you can almost fart in their face and talk call it Chanel number five. <laughs> and so now they're just being more and more blunt. But this is not new, is it? Yeah. And all your marching leaders do this stuff all the time. See what Malcolm found out? That French was in school, or we got white and black stuff. In other words, it's not as it's ugly, but what's uglier is our people's ignorance of it. They're so busy dealing with police systems that this has been going on around them all the time. Their families are being destroyed right in front of their face. Youth are dying younger and younger on the streets. The jails are being packed. Women are out there trying to survive, and children trying to survive by themselves, and they all got a bunch of beliefs that don't damn work. That was all given to them for control purposes. King Alfred and the of, 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 of the Roman, they think they worship the Jesus, they worship the Pope of Rome. And their legal guys have got 501 c 3 stolen loans agreements all over the cities. And they put that stuff ended in 1865. See how naive we are, brother, when we're trying to say to And for the few that wake up, they offer you the apple. Well, you can capture the birth certificate. You get the point. You get this down and teach somebody who doesn't know. That's your job. And do it well. That's what we're looking for here. And only through this ignorance that's existing can Rome continue what they do. And as long as we keep playing around, Rome got mandated. That's what's been happening. The source of Rome's power is the feeding off of our ignorance that Rome perpetrated and we accepted. Are we clear? Yeah. 
And our energy is put in belief systems instead of science. Therefore, we can't compete. But we keep think that the belief systems came from Jesus and God and Allah and all that stuff. But it actually came from Pope Jerome and the princes from the secret treaty of the world. Masses don't get religion, get wrong. But you can't tell them nothing. So when you wake up a little bit more and get out of the fence a little bit, you ain't far from the fence, but you can climb the head over the fence. So you give me an apple. Don't bite it. <coughs> you the point? All right, any other questions, y'all? We good? What happened? We good? I think people have paper. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Let's let's give our teacher a hand of, of appreciation for teaching. Um, and I know a lot of you may have paperwork and so forth, so just give us a chance um, to handle that. Also, over here to the right, we have um, our sister abundance. Brothers Chopper, who is the owner of our premier vegan restaurant, Drop Squad Kitchen. So you want to make sure that you go over and get something. If you, if you um, don't have anything to eat, you want to make sure that you um, get something from, um, from her. And please make sure you come over to my table. And I do have to organize a few pieces of so we want to thank you, and we appreciate our online viewers who have stuck out all of the on and off pauses that have occurred, because Facebook is really complicit in trying to just block the, the you're right, block the truth. But thank you for those who, when it pauses, you don't hang up, and you, uh, you don't you know, click off, and you know it's going to come back. So we appreciate you. It will be posted. It's posted in about seven parts. But just start at the bottom and work your way up. And you will see everything. Next week, um, we have Sister Roz Mariah Bay from RV Bay Publications. Um, I'm hoping she might talk about the planetary alignment uh, that's coming up on, will be the next day, which will be the 23rd of September, which has a big, um, everybody all over the world is talking about September 23rd, 2017 and what that means um, for humanity. So hopefully she will be discussing that from a cosmological and astrological group. But please be with us next Friday. Also, just for those of you that are in the area, live in the area or don't live far, this Sunday we are having here at House of Reawakening Minds um, a, a um, it's actually a dialogue, awakening dialogue. For those of you who are still maybe in your various religious belief systems, but coming out, coming out of them, awakening, and have questions and so forth from three to five, we have an awakening dialogue. There's no cost, um, and we will be talking about. I will actually be talking about my own awakening just a little bit as a former pastor, but it's really to help those who are waking up and they really need to be in a non-threatening, non-judgmental environment to talk about the things that they're feeling and experience. So if you are in the area or can get here this Sunday from three to five, um, we're gonna have a good time. I'll stay as long as six, but it's really three to five. It's something that I will be doing once a month um, and giving people an opportunity to kind of have those dialogues and get some answers and get, you know, just find out that you're not crazy, you're just waking up. Islam, um, thank you so much. Give yourselves a hand. And I, you know, and I would be remiss to say this, I'm, I'm very appreciative of your support, but I, I do have to say this, you know, please, um, we are in the honor system at the door. I don't, I don't, you know, at the beginning, Five, six years ago, I stood there, sat there with a can, and I took your 10 notes. I don't do that now. And I know all of you don't put 10 notes in there because I count people in 10s in, 
and they never add up. So, you know, our brother is more than worthy of, you know, having some compensation. You know, we don't give him anywhere near what he's worth. And when you don't help, we can't do it. But I will want to shout out to my online viewers because the people all over the country have been coming through, whether it be 10 notes, 50 notes, 100 notes. Folks online can't, don't even have the benefit of being up close and personal here with Brother Todd are giving and supporting House of Reawakening Minds. So please don't let them outdo you. Some of y'all go above and beyond, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I can count. <laughs> so, you know, if it's, you know, 30 people in here and it's, you know, it's only 20 tens in there and 10 folks didn't give, okay? So, you know, just because I'm not watching doesn't mean I don't know you, somebody in here. Okay, so if you don't have it, you don't have it, but some people just don't want to eat. And we give because this is what keeps this place going. And I appreciate your support. And I appreciate the fact that you, a lot of you are coming every week now. And every week is helping us. So thank you, not beating you up. I'm just giving you just a little tip. All right, all right, good night. I mean, you don't have to go because I know you all have paperwork and things that you want to do, so you want to grab one. And if anybody needs, um, I do have, um, uh, what is it, thumb drives, if there's anybody who wants to get their, um, the study drive from uh, Grand Sheik, I do have thumb, thumb drives available. All right. It's ten, and then he'll just put your, he'll just put the, he'll just copy it on it for you. You don't pay for that. You just pay for the thumb drive.